Hello, this is Laura O'Brien of the Irish Pagan School. I'm here with one of our esteemed teachers and colleagues, Dr. Gillian Kenny. And we've just been having a little chat before we come on camera here, and we're talking about fairies. So, um, Gillian, do you want to tell us um, uh, your experience at a recent a recent site visit that you did um, with with some um, some other visitors and tourists and that? And uh, there was a lot of uh, misinformation being passed around, wasn't there? Well, yeah. So um, I was trying my best to keep quiet because I wasn't leading it. Um, but there was quite a lot of um, behaviour towards the uh, tour guide asking actively how people from uh, who are visitors could meet um, fairies and what they needed to do. And eventually I kind of broke and I sort of went... <laughs> you don't want to meet them look, look. <laughs> and uh, they didn't quite understand and I said mm, it's not like Tinkerbell or anything you see on the telly uh you know with uh, you know I said it's quite a complex society and quite a complex relationship with uh, humanity so I said the, the 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 best thing is to share your space respectfully and if you see one just start running. <laughs> yeah, just start running. Shave top. Sorry over your just shoulder. Go, <laughs> I'm really sorry for existing. Please don't hurt me and run away. <laughs> Absolutely. I like. Just hope you don't piss someone off. That's basically all you can do, really. That's really it. And like, I think that the fairy doors and, you know, inviting fairies into your home and the fairy walks and all that stuff that we're putting up with now. And we seem to be accepting this as like it's the feedback from American culture. It started in the 90s in, in the US um, and it seems to be becoming integrated into like parents, particularly with small children. And I'm like, is this a fairy conspiracy? Have they actually, in, you know, have they, have they infiltrated us? And uh, this is how they're getting their yeah. feet now. <laughs> is Are they rebranding? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I do think like, so that's interesting, this idea, which, uh, you know, that your, your kids are otherworldly, everybody loves their children, They're, everyone's child is magnificent and fantastic. Um, what you don't want is to actually have a changing in your house, because that means your child <laughs> is somewhere else, yeah. not having a nice time of it, yeah. uh, or, you know, gone. Gone, um, fed, fed yeah, some like, back <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. I mean, it's... <laughs> It's very strange. It's it's it's. I think it it's about it's about people possibly not well, definitely not understanding the 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 ramifications of interactions with with the she um as they have been expressed over probably thousands of years within Irish culture that there is this idea of this community that there's the, these otherworldly and and they. If you fuck around with them, you find out. It's that simple. And you might not even have to fuck around with them to find out. They might just not really want you there or Take like you very much. For, and they, for their own reasons. <laughs> they may just decide. Um, And I think maybe people don't like the ramifications of that because it can make us feel even more vulnerable in an uncertain world. Um, In a world where people find it very difficult sometimes just to get on. If you add that in. Uh, but, you know, there's lots of ways of kind of living your life where you kind of rub alongside them, but uh, don't, you know, you're, you're careful not to do the things that we know will will piss them off. But it struck me as just really, um, just really a juvenile, really, and betraying a real lack of understanding because that, that you, you don't want that in, in your life. Um, you know, certainly there's, as, as you, Laura, will know and practitioners will know, there are ways to approach. Um, but the whole idea of like, it's just infantilizing it, you know. I mean, I had one, one person go, oh, you know, we saw loads of fairy doors in a forest. Well, those fairies are not going to have anything to do with that crap. Let me tell you that much. Um, <laughs> it's about, it's, it's, it's about, I think, an overlay of paternalism on, on the Irish tradition, on infantilizing a much older way of thinking and looking at the world and of kind of branding it up as some kind of Netflix friendly nonsense. Mm -hmm. And it's not like that. It's older and weirder mm -hmm. and deeper than most people can imagine. And actually, we were talking earlier, weren't we, about it's difficult to tap into that in popular culture. I, mm. I, I don't know how you do it. Maybe you need a Guillermo del Toro who'll make odd yeah. films about yeah. it yeah. so people yeah. will realise. 
some of them have murderous intent. <laughs> Stay clear. Yeah, and it really is. I mean, if I had to put a vibe on it, like that would be it. I think Cartoon Saloon do a really good job, um, you know, for getting the weirdness, but not making it too scary, I suppose. But I think yeah. I think their work has been has been quite accurate and quite on, on point. Um, we talked, there's a couple of new horror films, which unfortunately I can't remember the names of. Um, people can put them in the comments below. Um, but there's definitely one about uh, Changeling where the mother, I think, is being taken. And they're, they're quite unsettling. So maybe horror is the way to go, you know? <laughs> <laughs> trying to get yeah that kind across. of un unsettling I mean yeah I I mean it's just I think it's a weirdness to it and to the stories that's kind of missing now in an era of electricity and technology and mm -hmm. and you know um you know scientific rationalism that's not to say these things don't exist anymore it's just to say uh, I don't think we can process what it means, mm -hmm. or many people can. I think they have to slightly commodify yeah. everything, yeah. Um, and it has to be something that is relatable on a human level. I think the human kind of soul recoils from stuff where you are the predated one, yeah. where we're not the top of the food chain, and I think that really, really frightens the life out of people. And so they go, actually, it's Tinkerbell. Actually, it isn't. Yeah. But you know, um, <laughs> and if you, you think that, the night. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna regret that. Uh, yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, I, I just think it's, I think it must be. I, I remember, I remember years ago trying to think about what it would be like, um, to actually engage in that, and I always remember thinking, I think it would be like dealing with like a a a, a human sized cat who will Wild maybe animal, put up yeah. with you for yeah. a while yeah. but might then just bat you away and when you look into a cat's eyes it is an animal intelligence it's very different mm. and I think yeah. it to me I always rationalized it like that it would be it might look a bit the same but you look in you go oh that's not the same at all really mm. is it no yeah so yeah um, our our friend uh, Morgan Daimler has a great um analogy I suppose where you know, they would get a lot of people saying, well, I'm friends with the fairies and I've never gotten hurt and I'm I'm fine. And they're my you know, they take care of me and all the rest of it. And Morgan put it to me that it was like, you know, that uh, documentary about the guy who thinks that he's friends with the grizzly bears. The bear. Yes. <laughs> and his, him and his girlfriend end up going out and like living they with the bears him. and they ate him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's all fine until it's not, <laughs> I think. Well, I, I, you know, I kind of get it. But again, I think it's a human understanding of something that isn't. I think it's about most yeah. human beings want to get on well and make friends and have harmonious relationships. And there's a there's an under, there's a lack of understanding about, well, why can't that happen? Uh, and why can't I make that happen by saying these things? You can say it till the cows come home. It won't happen because uh, all the stories and all the folklore for centuries have told us time and time again that this is not how you approach these mm -hmm. in, in yeah. these beings. This is a different way of 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 existing, Absolutely. and you have to make space and room for it. Absolutely. So you can call them your mates all you like, but that doesn't mean they're. Well, I hope they don't invite you around to the brew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what you don't yeah. want. <laughs> yeah, you don't yeah. Want to get that's Nothing when, to eat and drink for that's me. When your ma, that's when your man's up with a change. Link. I'm grand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I'm I'm grand. No, I'm full. No, I I just full. had a cup of tea. Yeah, anyway, yeah. where's the exit? <laughs> Thanks a million. This, just uh, that stone chain. there, is it? This, this chain that I like carry with me at all times. <laughs> we actually have a chain. Yeah. We we literally have an iron chain in the car that um came from my granddad's friend's farm, um, who was like a horse whisperer, and. <laughs> <laughs> when the farm was being sold and everything there was a little piece of iron chain that you know used to be close the barn door and I took it with me and um, it had fallen on the ground and I was I thought it was going to get lost or whatever so um so I took it with me and that is literally our talisman that we keep in our car for site visits and it is carried onto the site with us in case of needed <laughs> 
Wait, really, Laura? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, you and know more been... about this than I do. So yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. But um... there has been a couple of times where that chain has had to come out and be wrapped around John's hand, like to to literally, and I I I don't know, just to get us out of there safely. <laughs> Here's our little ward, you know, and we're we're walking now, and you know, <laughs> this chain oh is clear in the way, you know, because you just get you get ambushed or you get surrounded sometimes by things that may or may not be there. Let's say. <laughs> well, I mean, I you know, I've I've brushed against it, like I I read the stuff and all the rest of it, and then I remember doing um. A, a piece of work I was doing years ago and it it called for unusually for me because it's usually desk bound I had to get out about and find mm. <laughs> find wells mm. okay because there was references to these wells and, and in the, it, no one knew where they were mm. anyway we had to get out and it was over by uh, Douth over by New Grange in, in Brunabonia anyway went walking you know out about and asking around locally where are they people were like I think there's a well such a place and then so someone said to me, um, just be really careful when you're going to look for the well. So I'm like, no, I'm fine. I've got my wellies and I've got blah, blah. <laughs> and they went, uh, no, they said, if you have any jewelry, leave it in your car. Mm. What? Uh, I was like, why? And they were like, well, sometimes they like to take jewelry. Mm. So anyway, okay. Uh, I took off my jewelry because I'd done enough reading by then to know. A person in the group didn't. Right. And guess who had no necklace when they got back? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It was okay. taken. Yeah, and we were told. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And he was like, "Oh, well, it must have fallen off." So I was walking. Okay. Yeah. Funny how it <laughs> fell there, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it happens. It it's a little happens. token. Yeah. 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 That's your that's your sacrifice. That's your toll. You know, your toll for yeah. for access. Actually, I'm slightly glad he did leave it on because if we hadn't had a toll, <laughs> could be still walking around in that field. <laughs> there are sites, Gillian, and I'm not going to name names, but there are sites where I've built relationships with over the years. And I mean, anybody who knows me can probably guess where I'm talking about. But um, but there's one particular site that um, cattle used to be bled on the hills years and years ago. Right. And that's not done anymore. Mm. And there's, and I mean, that's sites all over the country. In fairness, that was a very common practice at the Altona. Um, and that's when the, you know, the offerings were being made, basically, like, you know, and they were being driven through the fires and all the rest of it. So we have lots of references to that. And that happens all over the country. But there are things that are happening in and around some of these sites that are an unusual level of bad luck, let's say, right, between... Mm -hmm accidents and all the rest of it right an unusual level of bad luck and that's again I'm, I think I'm probably saying too much but I took it upon myself a couple of years ago to start going up and giving an offering at the Elton on one of these sites in particular um, after an incident and I don't know if that's going to make any difference I don't know if it will but it makes me feel better <laughs> you know it makes me feel like I'm also, doing it can, something it can about do no it. harm it could do well, no harm. It could do no harm. Not. So absolutely not. Why not? But there, yeah, there are blood offerings being made at some of these sites where, for years and years and years, there was just a, a very unusual level of bad luck, you know. And I haven't heard of anything since, but you know, it's not to say that bad things don't happen. Obviously, bad things happen mm. all the time, but just you know, it just gets to the point where like I've been doing this for over 30 years like act actively kind of in and out and, and paying attention to these things for over 30 years now and it gets to the point where you know one necklace could be a coincidence but then when you have somebody who like lives there and obviously they're regularly getting reports of the same thing happening over and over again like one necklace might be a coincidence that might, that guy might have just lost it while he was walking whatever that person but like when that person who's living in the area has heard that 100, 200, 300 times, you know, like where do you draw the line at coincidence? You know? It's what it's what fascinates me. There's a couple of things about it that fascinates me. First of all, it's the, um, I don't know, it's the acceptance um, that this will happen. So that's not something we're used to in the modern world and certainly not in Western societies when I talk about the modern world. 
but Ireland still appears to have it where people are actually comfortable to say that to you. Mm. I can't imagine being told that, say, if I went to the UK. Mm. Um, people might think it, but they wouldn't say it. So it's that idea that, well, actually, this is what, you know, this is what's going to happen. Um, and then the the kind of conversation with, oh, okay, then, uh, well, I'll, I'll take off my jewellery and leave it in the car. And the people who didn't, that's what happened to them. But I think it's also um, when people don't, uh, pay heed to that um, when they dismiss it and when they're taught to uh, you know of course you're going to question it of course you're going to go uh, you know part of you's going to go mm -hmm. really um, but I think it's also culturally uh, just respectful to kind of listen and go do you know what okay maybe there's something to this mm -hmm. maybe it isn't these beings taking them maybe there's something else but I should just listen to and, and I think for quite a lot of Irish history that was just completely dismissed as ridiculous kind of Irish imaginings and characterised as the kind of raving <laughs> of an uncivilised race. And I think part of adhering to that now is, to me, it's honouring, in a certain way, a life that went on before. With parts of it, you know, we're, it's, it's not by any means an ideal life, but it's something, it's a small thing you can do now to go, actually, maybe I should just listen to this. Mm. And maybe I don't agree with it or I think it's a different explanation, but it does no harm to listen and to wonder at a culture that can still do this. Yeah. yeah. You know, in, in yeah. the 21st century, people can still go, actually, you don't want to go that way, because if you do that, you'll end up on a stray sod. OK, <laughs> then I'll go the other way. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, It makes no difference to me. Mm -hmm. I, I understand people are like, well, you know, you know, slide into you know, medievalism, which is another whole issue I have, but a slide into, you know, this kind of thinking. I don't I don't think it is that. I think you can happily live in a 21st century world with technology and internet and you can still go, actually, this is a teaching and yeah. this is something that's come to us. So let's just just it's, take five minutes and go, we're going to listen to this. This is actually, interesting. This is literal ancestral wisdom, you know. People pay big money for that out and about in the world. <laughs> like, you know, and, uh, yes, Here they we are do. in Ireland, giving it away for free. <laughs> And I think, I think, uh, Laura, I mean, I think the history is long and it's often been terrible. Um, but one of the silver linings is that much of this wisdom uh, can still be tapped into, yeah. Um, yeah. that it wasn't all lost. Uh, you know, we know about the, the Gaelic language decline, but a, a lot of the folklore and a lot of those locally held beliefs are still there. Mm. So that's quite interesting. I mean, if anyone has ever lived in the, in England in particular, English folklore is wiped out, you know, mm. it's, it's, you know, quite a lot of it that, yeah. you know, the, the Normans Popular. came in and went, no. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, there's, there's gaps elsewhere and, you know, that I think there's a way of living here, which is, you know, I mean, you meet people here in Ireland. I, I, you know, I went for a walk up, um, Schlieve League in, um, Johnny Gold the other day and, uh, I, five minutes in and we're talking about ghosts, 10 minutes in and she's telling me, well, there's the bit in the mountain where Anya was swallowed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you're straight in. You, yeah. you know, it's like, oh yeah, why did ghost once sound did you? Yeah. 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 I live, yeah, yeah, I live in a house with ghost. It's just uh and you know, she's a, she's a rational being. I'm a rational Absolutely. being. But it's Absolutely. Interesting. Dillian, I think the best example of that was I was living in Roscommon and in Castlery Prison they had like an outreach program. So it was like a writers in prisons thing. So they asked me to go in and like teach about, you know writing and history research and kind of you know I was I was a non-fiction author um at the time and so I had to go in and start teaching some class well I didn't have to I, I wanted to they, they invited me so mm -hmm. um so I went in and I started doing um I started doing some writing stuff but then um they got really interested in the local history stuff so I started doing a little bit of that so I was booked for a couple of classes in a series and the first time I went in to teach this local history class there was like there was a room full of lads like you know what the fuck is this like you know we're we're ticking our box to be here or whatever like and there's yeah you know um it, it was quite intimidating let me just tell what's you what's this else shite yeah, what yeah is exactly this? exactly so the first thing i did was start to um start to ask them for their stories you know oh uh, great okay because they're all they're all irish lads like so and some of them there was a lot of northern prisoners there's um you know political prisoners there's you know there was all sorts in there right um 
So uh, so I started asking for their stories and they're like, what stories? What's no shite? Like, you know, what are, what are you talking about? And I was like, none of you has ever heard about the Banshee. Like, that's always the classic oh, one, right? straight always in. Always the classic one. Straight in with the Banshee, you know? Oh, yeah. It was a biggie. Yeah. And it was like, well, no, like... Oh, Banshee, my nanny used to tell me that like there was this one time when her cousin, you know, and as soon as one of them, you know, and like and initially very resistant, and then it was like, oh, well, actually, yeah, like I think I started, I told a little story, like you know, something that kind of would trigger the memory. I fucking triggered memories in nearly every single one of them. And when I came in the following week, what I got was a load of them had been on the phones or written letters or whatever they were doing, um, to parents to grandparents to cousins to, to figure out like was there something am I misremembering this or whatever so I got either expansions on the stories more details they had literally gone and done homework <laughs> brilliant and I was able to bring out maths and I you know I was able to oh show uh, show me where show me where this happened and we started marking it on this map and you know oh my gosh and, and it detective just, it just like brought the whole room together and like the lad did you know we're all like whoa like, this is so cool oh yeah <laughs> and honestly Great. Within, within a half an hour like I have been engaged you know into it but they all had stories they all had I honestly don't think by the end of that I don't think one of them had not either remembered something or found out something from their own family or something not just Banshee also all sorts we got death coaches we got um we got leprechauns, we got, I, I don't even, like, but anything. I even got one change to the story. And it was a, Oh, that's all right. That's a good haul. Genuine changeling story, like one of the really scary ones. Where, like, well, changing like, stories really freaked me out. Like, yeah. really badly freaked yeah. me out. But it was, um, it was the young wife one. It was one of the young wife's one where, uh, like, a great-grandfather had to go and, like, get back his wife kind of thing, you know? Yeah, so many of them, I mean, yeah, I, you know, I, so the, the, I just think, yeah, the, the changing, the, as we discussed, the changing aspect of folklore is so dark. And I think there must have been so much room for abuse and um, yeah. general awfulness within that realm uh, amongst the humans mm. that it really, really freaks me out. Um, but I think with the stories, I think with the in the prison, I mean, again, that's just kind of a mark of, of of humanity isn't it it's like what brings us together more than stories yeah. nothing you know yeah, it breaks exactly. down barriers and it exactly. breaks the ice and and everyone everyone loves those kind of stories because they're fascinating and I, I think part of us likes to you know even though even though there are strictures around it and there are warnings I think people there's there's a romance there's a there's a, something about believing there's this there's this other other world. There's there's something else out there that that there is some kind of of spirit yeah. who warns when death is approaching or who laments and sometimes engages with us, you know. Uh, yeah. So yeah. in a more personal way. So there's something about you know a, a, an unbroken chain of contact, mm -hmm. um, which is mm -hmm. just yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And again, partly thanks to the fact that maybe Ireland stayed rural and very poor for a long time yeah. um yeah. you know and that that managed to kind of keep its foothold here yeah. if there is yeah. that kind of contact but yeah, yeah stories are great I mean I've sat in rooms with you know people and that you know they just come out with these things and you're like wow that's just <laughs> you know you know oh yeah we we had a puka in a in a in an outhouse really <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> do you tell yeah 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 <laughs> you know, with, um some archaeologists one time and this one man it's quite a prominent one was like oh yeah 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 i know i know i i was working at a place and and the puka was there and he would down persuade everyone i mean no, and they were like no and he was like i'm telling you now i saw stuff that was just being thrown about and mm -hmm. there's no explanation mm -hmm. for it yeah and he was like well okay but yeah. I, you know yeah. whatever it is i just think i just think listening and and understanding and for me with these stories as well there's not only that aspect of it but it's about well what where did they come from why is it in these certain areas that these ones yeah. are told 
Um, why is it so unified, but also can be so different across really small distances and in regions? You know, especially the banshee, she seems to react in different ways, no matter which part of Ireland That's you're really in. really fascinating. And as well, yeah. like the, the, the thing I love about the banshee, so when I was first doing my master's, um, I was originally going to do it. I ended up doing it on own, but I was originally going to do it on the fairy faith. And I have written a book on the fairy faith as well. Um, so there was a lot of research, obviously, involved, like just setting all that up. And, you know, and I'm, I'm used to going back the way. Right. And, you know, even that's about the prison, like they were all older relatives and all the rest of it. Right. But I was like, I wonder, like in the next generation, like from me, you know, so I went to my own kids and I was like, does anybody do you or do any of your friends or anything have any stories? And of course, initially it was like, no. Nah, Nah, that's a lot of shite, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. Well, actually, yeah, there is that girl that, like, she says that she saw the banshee. Oh, there was, oh, yeah, two two girls I know said that they've heard the banshee. And one saw it and one heard it. And I was like, okay, so, like, one was in Roscommon and one would be around here in Waterford. And I was like, okay, so one saw it, one heard it. And again, there's regional differences. There's just... Yeah would not give me names, would not let me dig in because they're kids, right? But um, but like this is, you know, older teens, young adults, and there's still those things happening. You know, even <laughs> Blind Boy wrote his first book. Um, for anybody who doesn't know the Blind Boy podcast, it's amazing. One of the first, uh, when he started the podcast, one of the first stories he told was to read out one of the chapters where the banshee shows up and uh, he ends up having a, a bit of a, a sexual encounter with the banshee. <laughs> it's so, so funny. Like, But again, you know, it's just part of modern culture as much as it is a part of older culture, I think, like, you know. Yeah, I think, I think, and this, this relates a bit back to something we were talking about earlier as well. I think, I think we've traditionally had a, not a problem, but it's never been easy to translate kind of older Irish cultural references like the tales into mm. modern culture. Mm. And part of it, I think, was gatekeeping. Uh, part mm. of it was, you know, shepherding this idea of an Irish identity. And it's nothing about the tales could ever be changed or altered or, you know, despite the fact the tales grew organically and mm. have changed numerous times. How many different versions do we have of them? Like recent Many different versions. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, there's an idea of canon and it's linked to being Irish and, you know, you learn the tales. But I think, yeah, I think there's so, so much richness there that, that maybe isn't getting across that's not accessible to, to lots of people because mm. it hasn't really converted into modern culture. It might be future <laughs> generations who do it, really. Yeah, yeah. That was actually my, like, the only... I mean, I, I call it fiction, but it, it wasn't really fiction. But like the only time I ever kind of attempted anything like that was to try and like my book, The the uh, Tales of Old Ireland Retold, where I was literally I was so enmeshed in all these like, you know, medieval source uh, stories. I was like, well, how does that translate, you know, and how do you make it accessible and all the rest of it? So I rewrote only really short, like, but I rewrote a, a book full of them. And um, again, like, but. The thing that gets me is when somebody kind of takes something that either just takes a name or just takes one idea or a mis misconception of something like that the Morgan is evil or that the Banshee causes death. You know, like the a death messenger is not the cause of death. She doesn't kill anybody, right? But that would be a very common misconception, say, about the Banshee. And then they, they kind of hinge a whole story around that. You know, like, so they've got the basics wrong that's the bit I like that's where my purist <laughs> my purism comes in you know I don't like that but when you're actually taking taking the real source material and letting that inspire you and letting that translate that's what I wanted to play with in that book you know and I I mean I like it <laughs> I get good reviews on it but um and John does it as well in his uh tales tales of the bag of art um you know where he has a very personal relationship with the Dagda and he 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 understands or or believes depending on your point of view that the dagda actually wanted his stories to be retold you know because the dagda was being understood as this kind of almost like a fool a glutton uh, you know and certainly at the time when john would have started writing and teaching about him there was very little like technically he was like the king of the two of the for a while great but the only real story was like his extended belly and his farting and you know his gluttony and that was all yeah. that 
yeah. was out there, you know. So, um, so I think John's actually done a great job of exploring the Dagda's masculinity, you know, um, in in the context of of his time, but also in the context of our times of how that can be relevant now, you know. Um, so I think it can be done. And as you say, there's a huge, rich vein that is relatively untapped there, you know. Um, but it has to be done. Yeah, right, you know? it's about getting it across, isn't it? I'm just thinking yeah. to myself as you're talking there, I think we should do podcasts on 10 things not to do to fuck off the fairies <laughs> and um, five minute digests of yeah. uh, the best yeah. tales you can have, yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. just just to kind of get it across to people. It's like, actually, this stuff is com- completely brilliant and yeah. strange yeah. and you'd actually yeah. love it. Yeah. Um, but you know, don't be put off by the massive books on it. Mm-hmm. Here's the key stuff, you know. Yeah. He yeah. used to get so worked up that women had to bear their breasts to calm him down. I'm not sure how that worked, <laughs> but it's that kind of madness in well, a way, in that frenzy. I've often wondered if uh, those stories about him and Ferdia were true, then maybe it was like, oh, boobies. <laughs> that would calm Yeah, him. that stopped him in his tracks. He's like, ooh. And they're like, put a cloak on him. Yeah. Get him in. <laughs> Put them in the bath right now. <laughs> show your show your boobs. Let's yeah. go. They're like, yeah. for fuck's sake, you've got the women going. Jeez, again. Right, come on, let's go. Yeah. Put down yeah. the churn. Let's fucking do it again. Okay. And also, there's an element of the stuff we have to do for this bloody man. I know. Again, Who fuck's sake. Fucking yeah. So yeah, boy. actually, could be the right. Boy. He could be like, oh no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, ew. Nothing like that before. He's like, <laughs> don't want any of that. Yeah, well, you're, Gross. Sick, you're not going to be in your rage monster zone, are you? You're yeah, they're going like, to be like, Ugh. here, look at this. Oh. And he's like, oh, fucking hell, oh, man, it's put me off my stride. Thanks, <laughs> me off my rear stride. <laughs> I tell you, that's the end of that. It's the end of that warp spasm for today, ladies. Oh, Thanks absolutely. a million. Absolutely. You just think the shout will go out, won't you? You'll go <laughs> get them. He's he's on one again. Get them. Get them. <laughs> I'm doing something else here. Mm-hmm. You better come out. He's late, wasted ten farms already. <laughs> right here I come. Come on, come on. Anyone who's post puberty, get your arse on the battlements. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> this fella's not going to calm down. Maybe <laughs> we should. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. Well, look, we're. We're doing this interview here on the channel and we're going to have, this, there is a series, so we're kind of in the middle of recording a few different videos here. So um, I guess if people want more, comment below. And if you have any specific questions, comment below. We might pull together an AMA for Gillian at one point. Um, ask me anything. <laughs> I don't know if we need to go that Within far. reason. <laughs> Within reason. Ask me anything except to show you my boobies. <laughs> yeah, or to me a fairy. Because I'm going to go, no, thanks. No, no. Oh, is that um, the time? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we are going to be, definitely check out the other videos on this channel with Dr. Gillian Kenny. And of course, all the other videos with our other teachers and myself and John talking. Um, and if people are interested in more on the Banshee, Gillian has a class at the Irish Pagan School. There will be a link below to all of Gillian's classes. But she has a class called the Banshee. Um, mm. which is an exploration of history and folklore of Ireland's death messenger. So that is available on demand at the Irish Pagan School right now. And there's plenty of other classes on the fairies and all sorts of other fascinating topics as well. So thanks so much for that. <laughs> a little bit of an impromptu one there for this video. But um, we will get back to the other recordings. So go on and we'll see you next time. Check out the links below.